Hey everyone, Reflected here, and today I'd like to share some tricks that let you run complex and busy DCS missions in VR, even if you can't afford a nuclear power plant for a PC. Making DCS look good, especially in 2D, is easy. Just crank up all your settings and it looks beautiful. But I like to play in VR and all I have is a 2 year old laptop with a 3070 and 32 gigabytes of RAM. Also, as you know, I enjoy flying large scale complex missions that can be especially taxing on your PC. A year ago I released an in-depth guide to tweak your performance for VR and 2D, check it out if you haven't already, so I'm not going to repeat what I said there. I'm just gonna share a few tricks that I learned since then. 1. LOD Switch Factor I had no idea, but this is the absolute key to be able to have smooth FPS at busy airfields or carrier decks. See, every object in DCS has a high detail model that you see from up close, and a low detail one that's used at longer distances. No need to render the tires on a jeep when it's a mile away, right? The lower you set the scale, the less far you need to get away from the object in order for the switch to happen. I realized that in VR, things look kind of blurry and lower resolution anyway, so I don't notice it as much as I would in 2D. I can get away with setting it as low as 0.4, and it's a massive performance boost when I have lots of units close by, like at Nellis or a busy carrier deck. You can even change it in game, no need to exit the mission to experiment. 2. Maximum FPS I can't fly VR without ASW or asynchronous space warp enabled. That's the only thing that makes movement smooth for me. It locks my FPS at half my refresh rate, so at 36. But DCS is still working hard for the extra frames I could potentially have and that's a waste of resources, so I recommend you limit your FPS. Unfortunately, right now you can only change it by increments of 5, otherwise I would just set it to 36. Even if you don't have ASW, just think of an FPS that you're happy with and lock it there. 3. Fixed Foveated Rendering I have a Quest 2 which is pretty basic, it doesn't have dynamic foveated rendering or eye tracking, but OpenXR lets you use fixed foveated rendering, basically it divides each eye in three concentric circles and you can reduce the picture quality in the outer rings where you're never really focusing anyway. It can give you a massive FPS boost so it's worth experimenting with. If you want to look down at an instrument, you'll probably just move your head anyway bringing it into the inner circle, right? So set it to custom and start experimenting. 4. Empty VR Hangar You know, I always warn you how mods can break the core of DCS. Well, this one is not going to. It's a simple mod that removes the hangar and the flanker from the background of the menu in VR and all you see is blackness. Why is it good? Because if in-game you open the F10 map, the hangar and the flanker are both loaded into your precious VRAM and they're going to hog it. If you don't have a lot to begin with, why waste it on a menu background? I'll put a link in the video description, and I really wish ED made this a built-in option. And here's the plus one, IPD distance. This has nothing to do with performance, but if you set it incorrectly, objects may appear larger or smaller than in real life. This is the distance between your two pupils. So have it measured at an eye clinic or use one of the free phone apps. Setting it right can make a big difference in your VR experience. Alright, this is all I have for today. Again, check out my in-depth guide for more details. I'll put a link in the description. I hope these tricks will help you improve your VR experience in DCS. Let me know in the comments if you have any other tricks that you'd like to share and don't forget to subscribe. Alright, see ya!